Hello everyone, I'm Tom June, and welcome to UK Space News. Lift off and the clock has started. So we start this week with the big news, which came just a few hours after I recorded my last video, when this tweet was sent out. That's right, Spaceport Cornwall has cut the ribbon on their space systems integration facility, which will be used to integrate payloads with their rockets. And with that, Spaceport Cornwall is officially open for business. They're ready for their first flight by Virgin Orbit later this month, pending that all-important CAA approval. So a massive congratulations to the whole team down there on what really is a momentous occasion for the future of UK spaceflight. Speaking of Virgin Orbit, on October the 2nd, they successfully completed a wet dress rehearsal of the Launcher 1 rocket, with all systems performing nominally. That means that they're now ready to deliver Launcher 1 and Cosmic Girl to the UK, in anticipation of the opening of the first launch window on October the 29th. So, even if the CAA doesn't give approval for the October window, they'll still be here, they'll be ready, and we can't wait for that to happen. Now, I wanted to take a minute just to explain what makes Spaceport Cornwall such a good facility. First, rather than traditional vertical rockets, the SPC will be dealing with horizontal uh, launches, where the rocket itself is strapped to the belly of a converted aircraft, such as the case with Virgin Orbit and their converted Boeing 747-400, dubbed Cosmic Girl. For that, of course, you need a runway capable of handling heavy aircraft. Cornwall Airport New Quay, as it's officially known, is such a sight. Like most regional airports in the UK, it started life as an RAF base in World War II, and it continued supporting RAF operations, including flights of heavy reconnaissance Nimrods, all the way through until the early 2000s, when it was transferred into a civilian airport. The runway itself is some 2,744 metres in length, or 9,003 feet. A fully loaded 747 would require a minimum runway length of about 10,000 feet. However, Cosmic Girl with Launcher 1 fully attached will have no problems achieving flight from the SPC as its fully loaded mass is well under that of a commercial passenger carrying 747. Next, the location of the airport itself makes it ideal for spaceflight operations, with flights taking off directly over the Celtic Sea and out towards the Atlantic Ocean, thereby directly avoiding areas of dense population. That's critically important should anything go wrong mid-flight. If, for whatever reason, there is a failure, then debris will land in the ocean, as opposed to, say, pieces of a rocket landing in somebody's living room mid-TV dinner. All in all, that makes it a great base for Virgin Orbit to headquarter their UK operations, and it crucially means that they can place payloads as intended into both sun-synchronous and low-Earth orbits. So, with those factors, Spaceport Cornwall really is an ideal site for UK launch operations, in particular Virgin Orbit. In the meantime, while we wait for that all-important first flight, work continues at SPC where they are building, manufacturing, R&D and office facilities, and they are due to be completed in early 2023. That will mean that rockets can be developed, manufactured in-house, and then their payloads will be kitted out onto the rockets themselves and flown from the runway, saving both time and money for the operators, as well as further integrating spaceflight operations from one single hub. So, on to the other news from this week, and we turn our attention to Airbus, specifically their Mars Sample Fetch rover named Anon. Anon was originally developed and built in conjunction with NASA and ESA to support their operations on Mars. Anon was designed to link in with other rovers who'd been busy collecting samples on the Red Planet. It would fetch the samples, bring them to an awaiting launcher for safe return to the Earth. However, with the success of the Ingenuity helicopters, NASA decided to pull the plug on sending more rovers to the Red Planet, and they'll be instead concentrating their operations towards more helicopter drones. Given the considerable reduction in cost and complexity involved in sending helicopters over rovers, 
you can really understand why NASA have decided to go down this route. But that left Airbus wondering what to do with their rover. Well, this week they decided to take it to a quarry near Milton Keynes in England and drive it around for a bit. As we can see in this video, Anon performed beautifully and Airbus are now looking to use the rover for future moon missions in conjunction with NASA's Artemis program. As we get closer to finally sending humans back to the moon, more and more autonomous craft will be making their way as well, with surveillance satellites, cargo drones, and of course, rovers. Rovers will come in handy to support manned missions on the lunar surface, as they are able to do ground surveys, sampling, and a whole host of other activities. An interesting thing to note, as you can see, is the design of the wheels. Anon uses interwoven mesh wire wheels, much like in the design of the Apollo lunar rovers. These wheels were designed so that the rover can travel further and at greater speeds over rocky surfaces, as compared to flat aluminium wheels used in contemporaries like Perseverance or Curiosity. So, I really do hope that Anon gets its trip to space, it's clearly more than deserving and is a valuable piece of technology. So that brings us up to speed for this week. If you've made it this far and you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It goes a long way to helping the channel and I really do appreciate it. I've also added links in the description below where you can find me on social media. So if you'd like to reach out with a question, a comment or a suggestion for a future video, please do drop a comment below or get in touch via the links. Until next time, I've been Tom June. Thanks for watching.